Okay, in terms of telecommunications security, we have to think of at least two major factors in here. And that is the telecommunications channel as the channel for attack and also the telecommunications service as the target of the attack. Now, the, I mean, the first is fairly easy and with everybody using the internet these days, uh, everybody lives next door to every hacker in the world. And so, you know, it's, it's easy to see that, that, you know, this is the vehicle for the attack, that people are attacking you all the time over the network. But the, the idea of the communication service as the target of the attack may be missed. That um, the... Well, the, you know, the, the network channels, the, the long-distance channels, the telephone channels, um, you know, people, hackers, freaks, whatever, will be trying to obtain those services and use them for their purposes rather than yours. Um, whew, uh, for a while... Um, and as far as I know, it may still be. Uh, the um, pedophiles, child porn, etc. Um, people used um, voicemail. Uh, they would break into voicemail systems, you know, corporate voicemail systems. Um, and they would use that as a communications channel. That They would leave instructions uh, as a voicemail. And then... Um, other people would know how to access that particular voicemail account and uh, would, you know, relay information that way because they wanted anonymous channels. They didn't want to have links set up between themselves uh, by calling each other. And this way, uh, the communications was uh, broken by uh, a third party and... Uh, so it was harder to to determine uh, what the networks were. Um, the and, and so you know, I mean, it could be voicemail, it could be email, it could be uh, your web server, it you know, just all manner of things. Even uh, well, uh, the fact that uh, you know you can form a botnet, you know, if you're a large corporation with 5,000 employees, that's 5,000 potential PCs that can be formed into a botnet. Uh, so, um, do, you know, consider both of those areas, and, and, you know, that is not exhaust the possibilities by any means, but, uh, you know, consider it in the same way that, you know, we no longer just worry about confidentiality in information security we have to think about integrity and availability as well so um, now the the bastion model is particularly illustrated here in uh, telecommunications um, and, I mean, you know, there's Bastion servers and, and that sort of thing that we talk about. So, um, I suppose it's time to make the point, once again, the Bastion model does not work. Um, not in the modern environment. Uh, it is no longer just, you know, the bad guys are on the outside and we're on the inside. And as long as we keep that boundary there, uh, we're okay. You know, for one thing, as previously noted it is impossible to draw the boundary anymore. You know, the uh, security perimeter is so lumpy these days, uh, such a jagged line, that it's 
pretty much useless in terms of being used as, as a defining term in implementing security. We have to have all kinds of protections these days uh, with our systems, with our networks, uh, particularly with our networks. So, um, and what else have we got here? Um, well, I mean, there's all the different types of uh, telecommunications. Um, we have voice, you know, the phone networks. Well, originally it was the phone networks. And uh, then uh, we got data networks. And so we had different types of networks. And then we started amalgamating them. We had, you know, voice, voice over IP. Um, we had ATM uh, being used to manage uh, disparate types of traffic that we could have, voice and video, audio and data, all going over the same network. And whether it's running on ATM or not, um, these days that's uh, probably the case, not necessarily that you are managing, but that your communication service provider is managing in selling you service. Whether they are selling you voice, audio, video, or data, or a combination thereof, the, uh, the service providers are doing it over a data network. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, ATM at least as an illustration of mixed traffic. Um, in, you know, when it, when it was popular a few years back, um, oh, about 15 years ago, uh, a lot of people were pushing the idea that a company would manage all of its own networks, that they would manage ATM networks, that they would provide their own data, voice, what have you. And... Unfortunately, uh, people forgot that word manage in there and, and didn't realize that the, the complexity of, uh, you know, doing all of that management was not something that they necessarily wanted to do. So we have our uh, systems now running in that way, but you don't necessarily see it. Um, you uh, contract services from the provider and the provider provides them. But, uh, well, for example, um, it is unlikely that you will be able to get a landline phone anymore. I mean, not that they won't sell you a home phone. They will. But it's no longer, you know, dedicated uh, twisted pair back to a switch. It's... Uh, being managed over a network which is carrying probably your TV and your internet uh, as well as the home phone. And so where um, having a landline used to be uh, sort of a, a fallback uh, point of resiliency in terms of ensuring that when your data network went down, you still had some form of communication, uh, that's no longer the case most of the time. If you do have a twisted pair landline, don't let the phone company take it away. 